So moved. Judge, let me know that you get the Yeah, all right. Yeah. There you go. All right, folks, let's uh, come together for the Planning Zoning Commission meeting Tuesday, June 25th. Uh, before we get started, if you would, uh, uh, well, let me remind everyone, if you have a cell phone, to be sure to turn it off or turn it on vibrate so that it doesn't interfere with the cameras. And then join me for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, We'll try to get that right one day. One day, Mr. Chairman. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, commissioners, let's uh, before we get into our uh, docket, <clears throat> dockets this morning, our docket this morning, let's do the approval of minutes from our May 23rd meeting. Uh, we've got um, those were sent out. And are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Usually you get a motion in a second and then make corrections. Yeah, true. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? Okay. Sam? I have a second. Okay, second. Okay. Uh, any additions or corrections to the minutes? Okay. I don't see any hands going up. So, all right. We'll just do this by voice vote. All those uh, approving the minutes um, from our uh, May 28th meeting signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, no. Okay. The minutes uh, are approved. All right, I guess, um, Ms. Nunn, if you would, um, let's read our first docketed item, please. Well, let me get the staff's warning in. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Mm -hmm. Tell me, sir, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Our first docket is PZ-19-013. Application has been filed by JS Real Estate, LLC, for approval to amend a binding element attached to the approval of Ballard Woods Section 5. The property is located East Highway 22 at Ballard Woods Drive and Ballard Glen Parkway, Smithfield. The zoning is R1 Residential District, AG1 Agricultural Residential District, and CL1 <laughs> Conservation Residential District. All right. With that, uh, Ms. Alvey, I assume you'll be introduced to the docket. I will. Good morning, Amy Alley at the Oldham County Planning and Development. As Ms. Dunn stated, this is an application, <clears throat> excuse me, to and then uh, a binding element regarding section, uh, Ballard Woods Section 5. The property is zoned AG1, R1, and C01 and is approximately 154.6 acres. This is an aerial view of the property outlined in red. This just shows the existing zoning of AG1, R1, and C01. Uh, site history, I'm not going to go all the way back to the original approvals. We're just going to go back to the original approvals of this um, Binding element on July 24th of 2018, the Oldham County Planning Commission approved a request by JS Real Estate for a preliminary plan, subdivision plan on 33 lots on approximately 54.3 acres to be known as Ballard Woods Section 5. That was docket PZ18018. On January 22nd of 2019, the Oldham County Planning Commission approved a request by JS Real Estate for a revised preliminary uh, subdivision plan for 87 lots to be known as Ballard Woods Section 5. That was docket PZ19002. Um, on April 23rd, 2019, the Oldham County Planning Commission denied a request by JS Real Estate to amend binding element number five regarding the left turn lane, docket PZ19006. <clears throat> this is the layout that was approved um, back in January of 2019 for Ballard Woods Section 5. Uh, the applicant is requesting to amend binding element number five that reads as follows. So the current binding element reads, a left turn lane is warranted under the current conditions and shall be constructed before the first record plat. Uh, the developer met with staff and other county officials regarding the requirement of the left turn lane and it was determined that a reconsideration of the facts and findings was justified. Uh, the applicant is requesting to amend binding element number five to read as follows. In order to mitigate unsafe turning conditions for eastbound vehicles turning from Kentucky 22 to Ballard Vista Drive, the developer shall improve Kentucky 22 eastbound sight line approaching Ballard Vista Drive by clearing vegetation and performing necessary grading to provide stopping sight distance 
that meets current AASHTO standards. The clearing shall be effective upon approval of construction plans for Section 1, and the developer shall periodically maintain this condition for a period of 10 years. So this is <clears throat> a view looking, going, traveling on eastbound. Um, Highway 22, this is the curve, and the arrow shows the entrance to the existing subdivision of Ballard Woods. This is just another view. Again, this is the curve area here and the entrance here into Ballard Woods. Just another view showing the vegetation. Uh, this is exiting, so this just gives you a view when you exit. Obviously, that's not impeding view um, turning right or left out of the subdivision, but it kind of gives you a, another view of what the vegetation appears. Uh, the applicant states that by allowing for mitigation of the safety issue at Kentucky 22 and Ballard Vista Drive by clearing the vegetation, it will enable the intersection to meet sightline safety requirements as per current AASHTO engineering specifications, thereby effectively addressing the concerns raised by the county engineer and public at large. And this came from, uh, this statement came from the applicant's justification statement. So, in summary, the applicant is requesting to revise Ballard Woods Section 5 Binding Element Number 5. Um, I'm not going to go through and read it again, but basically it's to eliminate the requirement of the turning lane, and um, they agree to provide um, improvements of clearing um, the vegetation and grading to provide uh, safer stopping site distance. That is all that I have. All right. Uh, Mr. Silliman. County Engineer, would you like to provide your input, please? Good morning. Um, so at the at the previous hearing, uh, all of the applicants' traffic in, in uh, study indicated the left turn lane was uh, quote warranted. Um, our, our position uh, primarily was the concern with the safety, with the inter, the sight distance uh, that, that uh, Miss Alvey pointed out. Um, so when you took that sight distance uh, issue and combined it with the traffic data, it, it led us to the concern and the requirement for the left turn lane. Um, however, again, our primary concern was the sight distance. So um, as they've proposed, uh, the applicants proposed to clear and grade as necessary and maintain that for 10 years, uh, that, that satisfies our concern. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff on this application? Yes, sir. Mr. Rick Williams. For Ms. Amy. Would you, sh would you show that visual um, of the entrance again? Or, yeah. Now, w w could you help me with just exactly, can, can you show me based on this photograph, just exactly where the grading and the clearing is going to be? That would probably be place? a question for the county engineer. You want to defer? Um, yes, sir. Mr. Silliman. Yes. I've got another picture that, uh, it's the picture we used last time at the last hearing. In a month, I don't know what I did yet. Yeah, I've got it up here. <laughs> so, and again, this was taken before a lot of the veg vegetation has grown up, and so a lot of it's going to occur here because, again, we took a picture with a truck parked as it's going to turn left here. Yes, sir. So, clearing any vegetation, debris, and also grading that's necessary on this hillside mm -hmm. would make that uh, truck visible. Okay, and, and I just want to be clear, you're, you're okay. You're endorsing what is being proposed. Again, I feel my concern was with this, this site distance. And, th and that has been taken care of in your mind? It, it will be taken care of. And, and I think they've, they've put in the binding element that it'll be done to our uh, satisfaction or approval. So we just we want to make sure that again right now I think there's about 300 feet or less yes, of sight distance and we want closer to 500. So once we have that 500 feet, so a car that's approaching a stopped vehicle here can see that stopped vehicle and not rear end it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any additional, uh, Mr. Urban? Well, I just want to go on record as, as saying that I endorse this uh, um, alternate to the uh, uh, previously required turning lane uh, because of conditions out there and even constructability of the turning lanes. This is a good alternative for the safety of uh, the motorists. Okay. Yes, uh, Ms. Smith. Uh, Mr. Silliman, yes. 
did <clears throat> the don't you think since you want 500 feet shouldn't that be part of the binding element well to make that, it more specific um I don't, I don't think so since we've we've clarified in the minutes that that's the distance that, that's required from previous applications and again it's stated that this is going to be done to our approval and you can put that in there but i don't think it's necessary because it does i think it does say that it's two ashto standards right. yes. so that implies that distance well implication can get you in a world of well i'm sorry hurt. so the ashto standard is i believe it was 495 feet um, and then when we're and by not having specific times if we have weather like we have now uh, i know we're all probably feeling like we're in a rainforest or a jungle somewhere but ha who do people call in order to get if the sight line for them is not adequate who do they call in order to make that happen well it depends on the road in this case it's a state road uh, so we would have to de defer to kytc if this is a similar issue on a county road they would call and I understand that, but, but I, I thought. Can I answer that though? But I think to resolve this particular issue, they would right. call the county engineer's office. And if you choose to approve this binding element, then we would contact the developer and say it's time to go out and do additional maintenance. Because I was under the impression that it's the developer that has agreed to do this, yes. not. Oh, I'm sorry, you mean in this yes. specific case? In this I'm specific sorry, I misunderstood case, the yes. question. In this specific case, yes. I'm not talking about anything else except what's. <laughs> yes. You would contact my office and we'll coordinate with the, okay. the, the developer, the applicant. Thank you. We are, any of the binding elements that you place on any development anywhere, anytime, we are responsible for enforcing. So staff would be the one that would call the developer and say it's time to go clear okay. if it's six years from now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any additional Go questions? Ahead. Ms. Bonnet, sorry. I'm not sure who would be able to answer this one, but with the area that's being cleared, is all of that on the road easement? I'm just concerned more about how it may affect the property owner, since obviously they don't own the section they're going to be grading. Well, this they'll, they will have to, again, it's a state road, so the applicant and the developer is going to have to coordinate with the state. Uh, they will have to approve this work also. I don't see why they wouldn't. It's an improvement. Um, it would but all be within the road easement? It will have to be, yes. Otherwise, they would have to get uh, permission from the, the homeowner. Uh, but right now, I don't, I don't see why it would go outside of that. We, we would address that at that point if it And does. I don't think it was required, but was that, is that homeowner aware of the discussions we're having concerning the vegetation? I know it's not on their property, but... Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I have discussed the issue with the person that owns that property. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hadley? I had the same question. Okay. Okay, Mr. Douglas? Going back to Ms. Bonet's question, do you know what the, I guess, the right-of-way dimensions are there? Is it 50? Let me answer that. Last hearing, the engineer for the applicant presented a uh, drawing, and I think it had the road right away in it. I don't know if they're going to present that again today, but we did know from that exhibit where the, the property and the right away is. So we would use that exhibit to go do the clearing. That's okay. correct. And then my follow up question in <clears throat> in that curve, I don't know if you've got that picture back up there. Um, if you want to bring it back up, because I have a question about the curve. Which one? When you're looking across the street from Valor Vista oh, okay. into that curve. Amy, do you want to pull that one back up? That was your slide. And, and the one across the street uh, coming out of Valor Vista. <clears throat> okay. So I see there's utility poles there, mm -hmm. and I see there's also trees there. Will that be removed? All those will be removed because that's going to be some of the line of sight well, what, whatever is in the line of sight needs to be removed and within the right of way is there a gas line easement there there is but the gas should be buried so again this is this is all all work that's going to come with some future engineering uh, as mr urban said one of the issues with the left turn construction was the cost that was somewhat resultant from a gas uh, high pressure gas main there and there is there an embankment that goes up on top of the hill to the there, property? There is embankment, and that's the grading portion. 
that's why we specified not only vegetation clearing, but if there has to be a foot or two or you know however much grading of that embankment in order to clear. Uh, and adequately. is the county engineer's office, or is it going to be the state engineer's office to ensure uh, water runoff doesn't come on that road off of that bank for erosion? Because the, you're cutting down the vegetation. It'll it'll have to be stabilized, yes, uh, but the, the runoff uh, shouldn't increase significantly in that in this condition. But stabilization would be a, a concern, yes. Because you're, because as you, you can see the, the huh? They'll, they'll still have to stabilize it after after this overgrowth is taken off. You know, the primary concern is, is the primary again is these weeds and branches that are outreaching. They, they can stabilize the earth once it's put back. So, but then you're just creating another line of sight, correct? Issue? Not, not if it's low, not if it's low vegetation. Okay. Uh, my final question is if you go back to the, from coming on 22, two about, yes, right there is fine. So there's no blacktop extension going to be on the, where the curve is? No. Okay. No, not That's as it. proposed. Okay. Thank you. All right, any additional questions for staff? Okay, seeing none, we'll now move into the presentation of the applicant, our representative, and others in support of the application. I assume that would be you, Mr. Baxter. Me again, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> we want to get the folks sworn in before you start. Mr. Shum may testify, so yes, sir. All right. Ms. Nunn, if we could, let's get him sworn in. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Good morning, uh, Barry Baxter, 117 West Main Street. I represent the applicant again. Uh, so this is round three with regard to Ballard Wood Section 5. Uh, just for the purposes of the record, I had Amy make copies of the Planning Commission hearing from the 22nd of January and April 23rd, and I'd like to file them and incorporate them as a part of our presentation. Uh, I don't have a lot of slides, but you all will remember we asked when we came here on April 23rd to have binding element number five entirely removed. Our position was that, uh, that we didn't want to have to comply with that at all. Uh, you all have heard this morning from staff uh, that there was conversations between my clients and staff regarding the safety concerns that were raised at that April 23rd. Uh, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. So we have fashioned a binding element that would address those safety concerns. Um, this is just again noting the information that was contained within the staff report about the uh, consultations that have gone on between my clients, uh, the director, the county engineer, and I think there were some other county officials involved in these discussions. Um, and based upon that, it was determined that a reconsideration of our denied request would be appropriate under the circumstances. And we are asking uh, that this, which is the exact language that, was, that Amy read to you, uh, be uh, substituted as the binding element number five that is already in place in this case. Uh, again, Remember that we are asking that, uh, and, and it was, I believe, in consultation with Mr. Silliman, I don't want to speak for him, but that uh, this language, including the AASHTO standards, be included in the binding element, and that would call for the, the engineering specifications that are prescribed by AASHTO be met, uh, and they have to be met to Mr. Silliman's satisfaction. So if Mr. Silliman is not satisfied uh, that the site distance issue has been remedied, uh, then we're going to have to do something else to satisfy him. Um, you will note, and I know there was a concern raised, that we're going to maintain this for a period of 10 years. Now, I know people move, but I do want you all to know that your county engineer lives in Ballard Woods. So every day, probably at least once a day, he drives this very stretch of road. And I can tell you that I, I'm pretty confident that if he has an issue, he's gonna let my client know because he's gonna be inspecting, for lack of a better term, the work that has been done and whether or not the overgrowth has started to become a problem every day on his way home. Now, he may not stay there for 10 years, but at least for the short term, you're gonna be there, I assume. That's your intention, yes. right? Okay. <laughs> um, so 
this is the compliance and that's what I was just talking about is that that we, we have to comply with this and if somebody has an issue they're going to call the county engineer he's going to look at it and if we're out of compliance he's going to let my client know that they need to go back out there and do some maintenance that's going to resolve this um, this was just some information I copied it straight out of the staff report and straight out of our application as to what our justifications are um, just we, we are going to comply with the engineering specifications and we're going to uh, address the safety concern that was raised by the residents and also raised by the county when we were here in April and that that's the reason that we are asking that this binding element uh, be amended to reflect that language above uh, and that essentially I'm not going to rehash all this again that is our presentation and we would ask that you amend binding element number five thank you all right Mr. Baxter so that completes your application in? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, with that, uh, docket uh, PZ19. Well, I know, but uh, 013 um, has been presented, and I would now call on is there anyone here in support of the application? I don't think so, that would like to speak in favor of. Or is there anybody that would like to testify or has opposition to this application? Don't think so either, but uh, need to always ask. So, um, uh, with that, uh, Mr. Baxter, is there any final statement, or excuse me, I'm getting, a, getting ahead of myself. Are the, do the commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Mr. Finney. This is kind of a, te um, I guess, process question. Uh, when, when this was all brought up originally, we had, you, you were required to have a meeting with the uh, surrounding, or the people of the subdivision, correct? Uh, before the initial application, yes, sir. Yes. Do are the people aware of this particular change you're trying to make now? They would have been sent notice. So. I emailed the same contact that we have for the homeowners association as we have in previous ones um, for the revised development plan as well as the previous binding element amendment. The same email went out to that same contact person. So they, they are aware of this change. They were requested. emailed that same information. Understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any additional questions? Any additional questions? I don't see any hands going up. So, all right. Um, with that, uh, we're down to final statement. Mr. Baxter. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I won't bore you all with the final statement. Everyone knows our position. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Urban, I'm sorry. Huh. You said 9:30, Joe. Mr. Urban, what are you? Are we, are you comfortable? Yes, I I think that we should. The last time we incorporated the previous hearings minutes into the case, I think we should do that again today. Mr. Baxter gave us two CDs which we copied for him. I think you should consider adopting all the information because again, in the last month's hearing there was an exhibit by their engineer that showed approximately how that could be cleared in terms of right away and everything and I like to make sure that's in this record so I think you should make okay. a motion or consider adopting all right with that said the chair would entertain a motion to accept the two presentations on the CD uh, of our previous two hearings that incorporated more details of what is being requested so if I could get a motion okay mr. McWilliams moves that do we have a second? second miss Smith seconds okay now any discussion on the motion to incorporate the two presentations from our previous two hearings that outline more details on what's being requested any discussion okay. I think with this one we can just do it we'll just do a voice vote so all those in favor of accepting the two uh, CDs as a presentation uh, for uh, our consideration uh, the details on this uh, particular hearing, signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, no. <clears throat> okay, motion passes. And with that, I'll ask uh, Mr. Urban and Mr. Combs at this time uh, what's uh, being requested. Well, it's a, you've, you've heard what the request is. There's a proposed change to the binding element number five. I can read it again for the record to incorporate that in your decision. In order to mitigate unsafe turning conditions for eastbound vehicles turning from Kentucky 22 to Ballard Vista Drive, the developer shall improve Kentucky 22 eastbound sight line approaching Ballard Vista Drive by clearing vegetation and performing necessary grading to provide st stopping sight distance that meets current AASHTO standards. 
The clearing shall be effective upon approval of construction plans for section one of this new development and the developer shall periodically maintain this condition for a period of 10 years. Okay. You've heard commissioners of what's being requested. Uh, the chair would now entertain a motion on docket PZ 19013. Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for amendment of binding element number five as requested. Uh, the language of binding element number five will incorporate that passage just articulated by Mr. Urban. Mr. Combs, is that adequate? That's fine. Okay. Do we have a motion on the floor? Do we have a second? Mr. Haffin. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I will have a motion on the floor and uh, uh, at this time, and we will now open it up for discussion. Mr. Urban. I just want to clarify that by adopting the previous minutes, it, all the other stuff goes with this. You know, all we're doing is changing binding, binding element number five, but all the other four binding elements, so the development plan approval, everything uh, is incorporated into this decision. Okay. Any discussion? Any discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing none, we will do a, a roll call vote on this one. So this motion is on docket, uh, relates to PZ19015, relates to um, uh, binding <coughs> element number five, would, would be changed under this, uh, if this is approved. So Ms. Nunn, if you would, let's go ahead and do the vote. Okay, Mr. King. Yes. Mr. McWilliams. Yes. Mr. Hampton. No. Mr. Finney? Yes. Mr. Hapling? Yes. Mr. Falvey? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Neal? Yes. Nasser? Yes. Ms. Bonet? Yes. Ms. Davis? Yes. Mr. Douglas? Yes. Mr. Elder? Yes. All right, the motion to approve the revised uh, number five uh, binding element has been approved on a vote of 12 to one. <clears throat> so with that, commissioners, don't get in too big a hurry because we do have uh, a little bit of training that we would like to uh, do here this morning and we're gonna uh, recess from here and reconvene across the hallway here so we can, uh, Jim <clears throat> and, and Miss Alvey are gonna, and Tom I think are gonna provide us about an hour's worth of training. So. Uh, folks, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to note that Mr. McWilliams said 9.30 and I managed to get 9.28. Uh, okay. so. <laughs> Good deal. All right. Before we, before we adjourn from here, is there anything for, for next month? Uh, filing deadline is tomorrow. As of right now, we have not received any applications and staff's not aware of anything that's coming in, um, but I will send an email out on Thursday to confirm <clears throat> whether or not we will or will not have a meeting in July. But as of right now, we don't have any applications. Okay, and do we have anything, or SRC is not meeting this month? Correct. Okay. Correct, because so. we are working with focus groups on the comp plan, and we'll talk about that in the training as well. Okay, well, if we could, let's, uh, Let's uh, get a motion to adjourn. Recess. Recess, I'm sorry, recess. So moved. What? Okay, second. Wow. No. no, you're going to adjourn. We're going to have a recess for five minutes or ten minutes and reconvene in the conference room. It's not adjourning. So we're taking minutes of the training and then coming back and coming back into... No. All right. It, okay. We've never done that before, so okay. I'm not sure adjourn. why we're doing that now. Sorry. So. Okay, I thought so, but I, you know, I wouldn't argue with the staff. But anyway. It is a quorum. Right. This is a motion <laughs> to adjourn. But we will reconvene across the hall. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. All opposed, no. Okay, thank you all. I was like, how am I going to do the minutes over there? <laughs>